Okay, I'm not sure how this is going to work well, but I'll try it. We're going to contrast now the use of Melista Day, which is later Greek, about the 50s, 60s AD, if you're you know, talking about tracing it in the Bible, versus the more conventional and earlier way of stating the same kind of idea in the Bible. So to do this, and unfortunately I have to do it in English, we're going to look at the word especially. So I'm just going to search on that, and hopefully it's not, it's not doing it. Wait a minute. Search for the string. And this is the way the word especially is translated, which isn't necessarily what we're looking for. But I have to go through all of those things and see what, you know, what various translations call especially. Okay, let me change this to English. All right. The New American New American Standard Version doesn't follow the same translation conventions as do other English Bibles, so it's not going to be as easy to follow. But I can distinguish. Okay, see, like New Amer the um, the later Standard Version that's you know newer. English Standard Version is using especially in this verse. Now let's see what they use to translate it with especially. Okay, it really means including, but this is that told all. That's ev that's translated everything here, and then the more conventional way that in Greek you would use like especially or even is with chi and then that would be followed by the object okay so the chi is used essentially there's there's an essentive use there's an additional use usually called copulative by scholars okay instead of saying especially or using malon or using Best, you know, especially Melista, they would just, in the older Greek, you just use Kai. And the same thing is true in the Old Testament. I'm just trying to keep this video short. You can do the same kind of search in the Old Testament. I'm just restricting it to the New because it's older Greek. Matthews is older Greek. Matthews is 30 AD Greek. Okay, so he's only using Kai when he writes because Matthew's doing a lot of narrative in his own Greek. His own Greek. Okay, and he's just using chi. Chi can mean including, even, really would be a better translation here. Okay, they reported everything, even, which adds stress to what happened to the demoniacs. In other words, in Greek there's a convention of speech where when you want to stress something, you put it at the end of a sentence and you use chi in what might be considered, you know, uh, a stressful, stressing, rubricating position like it is here, okay? So to translate this instead of saying including what happened as especially what happened, like the ESV does down here, the ESV being one of the later translations in the English by a bunch of scholars, um, this isn't a bad translation because it's, it's, a, it's in the last part of the sentence which in Greek stresses it because it's the last thing you remember. So they're sort of saying, hi, the herdsmen are telling, are, the herdsmen flee, they go into the city, they told everything that happened to them, but they are stressing what happened to the demon-possessed men. Okay, and that's not a bad translation. All right, but the word that we want to focus on is what word in Greek is used to explain that, to, to add the stress. It's just a chi. That's very frequent in older Greek. Just use chi. All right, so Chi is used to mean especially in older Greek. Same thing, of course, is true in Mark, except Mark is written about 68 AD. And what surprises me about Mark is that Mark is not using Melista anywhere. I would have expected him to use it. 
all right and here again you have the ESV or who, who's the book using it as especially to mean especially ah the new living translation okay and it's not wrong that they use that there see it's saying for even the Pharisees and especially the Pharisees that's not a bad translation because the, the Pharisees were known for this they were all big on behavior so carefully washing their hands so for the New Living Translation to translate that as especially as they do here that's not bad but what's surprising me is that Mark is not using Melista I expected him to use it but since he's writing about he's writing his gospel and he each gospel writer has a different rhetorical style that he uses to tell information everybody already knows in Mark's case he he likes to stress the the lack of belief despite the miracles that's his big you know vantage point in other words like you know Shakespeare wrote Hamlet and then everybody and his brother after Shakespeare wrote Hamlet you know, Matthew's being the gospel that's equivalent to the first folio of Shakespeare here. Everybody else retelling the story is going to stress certain differences, you know, certain angles of the same story. And in Mark's case, he's stressing the, the miracles. I've been doing the synoptic gospel series. You can, you can see I've started it already. I haven't gotten as far as Mark 7. But Mark is wrapping his gospel around Matthew and Luke. So that might explain why Mark is not using Melista because it wasn't a commonly used term okay at the time of the Gospels alright so he's not using it because it wasn't a frequent enough term then to make his gospel a part of the times you know like if you're making a gospel on Shakespeare if you're making a Shakespearean play you're going to use Elizabethan English you could translate it into modern English if you wanted to but if you don't want to then you're going to use the same language as the language of the times even if you modernize the plot to tell the same story like Hamlet for example you can tell Hamlet in terms of the original play you can tell the story of Hamlet by changing up the facts a little but still telling the same story okay Mark is not changing up the facts to tell the same story he's stressing certain facts over others in his short version of the gospel because Luke and Matthew had already been written sorry for all this preamble about Mark but so many people don't know anything I have to keep on giving the backstory okay so now we come to Luke and the version of the English let me get rid of this the version of the English calling it especially is again the New Living Translation and okay he's even alright so it's the same thing he's using Kai to say especially alright here it's more frequently translated even okay but again somebody's using it to say especially and that's okay that's the new King James version this time is saying especially alright so now it's used twice and that gives it more force okay even you it's got the force of especially you because of Nunda alright in other words this and this are tied together all right and so that's why especially is used in one of the translations okay then we have John 1931 which is one of my favorite passages okay so which Bible is translating that is especially okay about the high Sabbath all right John isn't using the word especially he's using a word though that can be read that way because he's talking about let me give you the okay see when he's talking about this Sabbath this is the high Sabbath okay for Pilate let me pull this down <coughs> he 
he's the English translation is taking into a fact that this is a high Sabbath and so they're inserting the word especially into it but there's no he doesn't have to use any word like Kai even to to stress it because he's already using Magali which means high Sabbath literally it's translated great but it means high okay it says, it says great was that Sabbath right there that was a high Sabbath is, is what this phrase means in idiomatic English okay here's the word for the day was a high Sabbath okay so you know especially should you use it in that verse yeah maybe okay it was a special Sabbath okay that's what Magali tells you okay and then of course here we see Magista Melista rather used and of course again Melissa but that's 50s AD late 50s AD Greek okay it's not in the Gospels okay now somebody's translating Romans 5 7 with the word especially let's see who it was especially good okay I don't know if I would use that because Paul isn't even using that. Okay, this is translated even. Someone would even dare to die. See, it's translated properly even here. So the sensitive use of Kai. In other words, if they wanted to say especially in earlier Greek, they would use Kai, Kai da, Malon, Malon da. They wouldn't use Melista. It wasn't used in earlier Greek. So I think in the next increment I'll go to that, but let me finish off this one. Okay. Who's translating it with especially here? The New Living Translation again. Okay. That's just he's just using the there. Okay. Menda. He's using it in reverse order, that's interesting. Okay. That's being used to say especially, to stress the thing that he's saying. Okay? But it's not Melista. That's what I want you to understand. Is they're making a distinction about something that sort of is higher than something else. But the word Melista is not being used. Because Melista is a, is a special word that was used in Homer, as I showed you in the prior increment. Okay, and then here it is again, being used in the Homeric sense, except this is the more traditional way of saying it. Malonda. Malon is a comparative, not a superlative. Malon does very common in earlier Greek. That's the way, if, if you were being sort of semi-formal, okay, in the way you used, you wanted to say especially, you'd use Malon da. Or Kai is more informal, da is more informal, but Malon da is, is got stress to it. It's got a little bit of Greek drama, classical Greek drama stress, okay? And Paul's using it right here in 1 Corinthians 14, which is interesting because, see here we got especially toward you. He likes to use versions of perisuo. This is the adjectival form, I think, adverbial, adverbial form. Okay, perisuo means to superbound. Okay, and it's a favorite word of Paul's. Okay, and Peristero, peristeros. Okay, that is the adverbial form from perisuo, which means, which is a verb to abound. Okay, this is a very common way that Paul uses it. He uses malonda, and he uses perisuo form and forms, like he's using here. All right, and this is all 49:50 A.D. There he's using it again. Okay, to to mean especially. All right now who is using especially here in 2 Corinthians 7 okay in the NIV we were especially delighted yeah there he is there's Perisuo the formation again see adverb okay and then 2 Corinthians again this is written about 4950 AD you see Melista was not commonly used. Other words were used. Malonda, 
Okay, Paul's favorite peris perisoteros. Perisoteros. I'm, I don't feel like speaking Greek well today. Okay, I'm tired. That's not an excuse, it's just a fact. Okay, it's, so here we go. And in 1014, where is it again? Oh, I'm, I'm back to 1013 now. And what are they translating as especially? See, this is the, this is what you need to go through if you're going to do your Bible homework correctly. Okay, New King James especially includes you. Okay, so what are the Greek words that are used, especially just a simple chi? So Paul uses peristosteros and chi and malonda in the earlier letters. In the Gospels, it was da or chi. We didn't see even malon yet. It might be there. I'm going to search on it. but Okay, and then here... Who's translating it with especially? New Living Translation, especially when I'm not with you. Okay, so why are they getting that word especially out? This is not only when I'm present. Okay, they're, they're just taking the chi here and calling it especially. I can see why they get that. Okay? Not merely when I'm present with you. In other words, they're saying especially when I'm not with you. Okay, they're, they're taking this phrase here and they're, they're giving us a different slant than the other translations. That's okay. I'm not sure I buy into it, but it's okay. I mean, you have to think about it. Okay, and then here's Melista. This is Galatians now. Now notice, Galatians is also considered one of the earlier books. Alright, so it's not like Melista wasn't ever used, and, and the term goes back to Homer. But it's not frequent. It starts to become frequent in the 50s. That's the point I'm trying to make here. That that you have to do a lot more study than I'm showing, all right, to really establish the the change of a word, the way it changes its semantic range. But um, obviously we got a change going on. That you can conclude, but what kind of change it is, you still have to do more homework to find out. Okay, Philippians, we've already seen this already. This is Melista. All right, Colossians 3, 5. Somebody's translating especially. It looks like it's going to be here. I have a feeling that's what they're using, but let's see. Especially greed. Okay, see? That's the New Jerusalem Bible now using the word especially. Okay. Yeah, greed. So they did use Kai. Okay. All right. Colossians 4 3. All right. Um, who's translating what as especially? Okay. That's in New Jerusalem Bible also. Pray for us especially. Actually, it should be a Kai. Let's see. Yeah, right here. Pray even for us. All right. So again, Kai is used more often than Melista, and that's in a pr prison epistle. All right, so in other words, the traditional use was Kai, Malonda, and Paul's favorite, Peristeros. Okay, but Melista started to come into being used in the 50s. This is a prison epistle, and he's still not using Melista here. All right. In other words, he's not using it uniformly as a replacement for the the more classical, traditional Greek. Why? Because Paul was born before Melista became popular. So his speech is going to be a mix of what's then popular when he writes and the more traditional, which is the Greek that he actually learned. Okay? So Thessalonians, that's another early epistle. Who's translating that as especially um, New Jerusalem Bible, especially strong desire. Okay. Okay, so they're translating that idiomatically because it's poly here. 
not a Kai and not a Malum. They're just poet and great. So they're translating the New Jerusalem Bible is just taking that and making it into modern idiomatic English. Okay, here's Melista again. Definite Greek construction. Okay, and this is late, late 60s. Middle of late 60s. This is Paul's first imprisonment. Okay, here's Melista again. No, it isn't. Oh, yeah, it is, yeah. Sorry, I wasn't looking at the right text. Okay. First Timothy 5.17, Melista again. See, it's real common in Timothy, which means that the word was in, in play. Okay. And then here he's using Melista again. So somewhere, I mean, I'd have to do more homework on it, but somewhere between the late 50s and, you know, middle late 60s this word became popular <coughs> okay here it is again Timothy Philemon I've already gone through this in the earlier increments so I'm not spending much time on it but see he's still using model and day okay he uses Melista this is really an interesting construction he's using Melista for himself but he's also using a variant of Malande for Timothy or for Philemon. <coughs> so that's an interesting construction. I, I really want to spend more time on it, but I can't. He's using Melista here as a lower, lower construction than the classical Malande. See? Especially to me, most of all to me, but much more than the most to you. Isn't that cute? See, this is classical Greek. This is this is the the earlier Greek. So he's saying that, you know, this is Melista, this is common usage. So he's use, treating himself sort of like common. Okay? And then he gets classical when talking about how much it applies or how much what he's saying is true for Philemon. Okay? He's putting Philemon above himself by using the superlative as a lower status. And he's taking classical Greek and applying it to Philemon, asserting a higher value to Philemon than to himself, Paul. Isn't that cute? That's a really important verse to look at. I wonder how much Greek literature uses this construction. I bet it does, because Paul was a classicist as are most of the Bible writers. Okay, then we got Hebrews 10.25, <coughs> which, who's translating it with especially? Ah, New, Lang New Living Translation again. Now the day is coming. Okay, Malon, Classical Greek. Uh, Paul didn't write Hebrews. It's not his kind of Greek. Somebody trained under him probably did. And somebody well versed in classical Greek did. But I'm not sure who, neither is anybody else. Somebody, you know, just invented the idea that Paul wrote it. Um, but you can prove that he didn't, especially uh, in Hebrews 13 23 when it's talking about Timothy being released. Paul had just been killed. So Paul didn't write a book as a result of Paul being killed, obviously. Okay, this is classical Greek. To use malon to mean especially. Okay, so all the more is how they're translating it, and the Greek where they're translating to mean that is malon. Okay, that proves to you that again, the there's some kind of there's some kind of I don't know gradual change in the way Melista is used versus the earlier Greek represented here by Malone that's happening in the 50s and the 60s. And again, if I were myself less than 60 years old and I were going to seminary, which, you know, I don't believe women should do that. But if I were, if I were a guy, that I would, I would do my doctorate on this because this is a great uh, word to use to show the changes in the Greek language within 10 years. Okay? 
Then we got Hebrews 12, 1. Who's translating that with especially? And what words, Greek words, therefore, are they using? Um, New Living Translation again. Especially the sin that so easily hinders. Okay. So. Kai. They're translating Kai as, as especially. So again, that's cla that's more classical Greek using Kai sensibly. And it's still the same writer of Hebrews. Okay, he doesn't use Melista at all. Okay. And then there's 13, Hebrews 13, 19. See, whoever it was, it was somebody who was with Paul. Because he got out. W was it Mark? I doubt it, because Mark's Greek is very different. But maybe, you know, because a person can change his writing style. And who's translating it? Okay, the, the New American Bible is translating especially. That's probably a Kai. I didn't look. The. He's using the. Particle of contrast. See, malun, malun, da, da, peristeros, which is Paul's favorite keyword, um, rather than melista and kai in the sense of, is how you would say something like especially. Melista is, again, got its origin in Homer, or maybe even before Homer, but it doesn't become part and parcel of common speech until sometime in the 50s, 60s AD as we're seeing here even in Second Peter. See, because Peter's using it, but he doesn't use it anywhere else. Okay? Where's Melista? Right here. Melista that. That's that's a new that's a neologism. <coughs> it's still classical Homer idea. But the words that they're using to express it have changed. Alright? And we got third John one five being translated especially. And he's using Kai in its traditional use. Ascensive. Okay, now in the next increment I'm going to show you the difference. Hopefully you've seen enough of this. I know it's been boring, but hopefully you've seen enough of the constructions. I mean I could I could do more, but it, the basic the basics are, are shown in this uh, video. And the next increment I'm going to show you how Josephus uses it, which is very different from what you've seen here.